Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What a beautiful morning it is. How many people were here for the Jeep Jamboree? Jeepers? All right. Jesus loves Jeepers. It's in the Bible. He did. Jesus loves Jeepers. Hey, it's a great morning, and I want to welcome you this morning. Uh, you guys who are new, but might be new to us, uh, please do. We invite you to sign our guest book and put your email address down. And that way we can really bug you with a lot of spam, you know. No, just kidding. It's just like once a month we do a newsletter. You can keep up with stuff going on here on the island and kind of spiritual stuff and cool stuff. So anyway, sign our guest book and feel free to take. We've got newsletters that are hanging around and, and check out our website and all sorts of good stuff. So Lighthouse Church, DrummondIsland.com. Uh, welcome Facebookers and future YouTubers once this gets uploaded. But we've got a great topic for you this morning. It's how to live in the present moment. How to live in the present It's like three steps to happiness. And you're going to learn it here. You're just going to walk out those doors and go, whoa, okay. I've, I've spiritually ascended or something. But anyway, you'll have a great time. There is coffee out there. We're obviously casual here at Lighthouse Church. So you feel free to bring your coffee in, hot chocolate, all sorts of good things out there. Uh, next week, for those of you who will be there, we do our collection for our second quarter missions focus, which is Baycliff uh, Children's Camp. And it's for just, uh, needy children, uh, special needs children. Uh, that's out north of Marquette. And then also we're collecting for CareNet Pregnancy Center for the little babies. Uh, and they do a wonderful job up in the Sioux. They minister to uh, actually both parents and unborn children and born children and do a great, great job. So we'll be collecting for both of those next Sunday. Some of you may have baby bottles or different collection things. Stuff your change in in your dollar bills and your checks and all that. And we'll be collecting that next Sunday. So that's and then we go into our third quarter, which we'll be collecting for local kinds of outreach around here. Uh, and we will we help out individuals, families, organizations, things that, that spread the love of Jesus across our community. So that will be the third quarter focus. And again, you can follow these things on our website, www.lighthousechurchdrummondisland.com. We're not... I don't know why I did that, but .com. I thought it was better than .org at the time. Long time ago. But anyway, and by the way, happy Father's Day yeah. to all dads out there, huh? The word for dads, huh? We did our part, didn't we, dads? Huh? <laughs> Keep the generations going. Here, here. Boom, boom. So, uh, sorry, that Tim Allen just kind of came out just suddenly. So, happy Father's Day to all dads. So, let's start off with a prayer. Get things rolling. Thank you, Jesus, for being with us. Thank you, Jesus, that you never leave us or forsake us. Thank you, Jesus, for just guiding us through the twists and turns of this crazy life. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for keeping us safe and for watching over us. And thank you, Jesus, for being the Word of God, that Word that is written upon our hearts, right upon our hearts this morning. Those messages we need to hear, those words or pictures or whatever that we need to hear to live fully in that present moment with you, to understand you, to embrace you, to understand the fullness of life in that split second that we call the present. Help us to do that, Lord. We love you, and we give our lives to you in Jesus' name, amen. So let's, uh, you can stand or sit. Um, there are things you can wave. If you're feeling really extroverted today, you can grab these things. But uh, we're going to sing an old favorite that's based on scripture. I think you might recognize it. Well, the older people might recognize it. Present company excluded. But sing along with us. <clears throat> Time to be born, a time to die. 
Anybody know what book of the Bible that's from? Whoa! Gold star for that lady back there. Ecclesiastes. Here's a pretty I think song. that was in my crossword puzzle. <laughs> was that in your crossword puzzle? All right. How did you know that, Mom? <laughs> You're so smart, Mom. <laughs> knows each one of us personally, intimately, and by name. And he calls us into his arms. He calls us into his arms.
This morning we're going to talk about probably the most important thing you can do in your life. And that is to live fully in the present moment. And that's easy to say. Just smell the roses. <laughs> Stop. Smell the roses. It's easy to say, but tough to do for a number of reasons. And we're going to explore that this morning. But to start us off, I want to introduce to you somebody who you've probably not met. She's a young woman who lives in the northern part of Sweden. She lives on the old family farm that has been there for generations. She is Swedish. Her name is Jana. And Jana is very creative. She's a photographer. She's a filmmaker. She is an artist, a painter. And she does a number of things. But I want to take a look at one unique gift that she has for living in the present moment. Take a look. Your arrow's in the center there, John. <laughs> they hide it, sorry. I really love balancing stones, mostly because I think it's such a great way to also balance myself and to create something beautiful at the same time. Even though a little wind is enough to make it look like your sculpture never was there. But in this moment, as I try to find a tiny, tiny little balance point, my thoughts are completely silent. And that's a very good feeling. Sometimes it only takes a couple of minutes to make a balance, and sometimes an hour. But when it's done, I love to watch the stone balance. It looks so still and quiet in a world that is constantly moving. Very often, I see people commenting that it's fake, that it's impossible to do this, and that it's photoshopped or glue. But I kind of get excited about those reactions because it's a proof that there is so much more in this life than we could ever imagine. If some people think that this is impossible, imagine then how many more things there is in life that we still think is impossible, just because we never really tried it. Just because we already put the frames on what is possible or not. get a lot of questions about how to learn this and my advice is just go get out there find some stones play around and have fun after a while you will get to know the stones and get a feeling of how to balance them in the best way and you will learn to see which stones works best together you might spend a lot of time trying to balance a stone that will never balance but you learn something every time and it's a wonderful way of spending time in nature kind of stone balance you're doing, the balance point can be really tiny. So the movements that you do while adjusting the stones to find the balance point are so tiny that you can barely see it with your eyes. You just feel it with your hands. And when you finally find that tiny balance point, the gravity will be there for you to hold your stones together. this video, by the way, if you Google 
uh, the art of balancing stones, and her name is Jana, uh, J-O-N-N-A, and you can find that video and other videos too that she does. Just she's just one of those really creative people. But you may not be so good at balancing stones, okay? I mean, you could try it, find some stones and see what you can do. That's that tiny little balancing point, a tiny little place that's a balancing point. And it helps us in our introduction to living in the present moment. Remember she said that as she is doing that, her thoughts kind of melt away. And that place of living in the present moment where you're not really thinking consciously or trying to do something, you're simply experiencing the presence of God. You're experiencing the presence of the Holy Spirit of Jesus in your life without overthinking it or theologizing and, and trying to crank stuff out. You're simply relaxing in a way in the arms of God himself. And the thoughts melt away and you're not judging and doing all sorts of mental gymnastics. You're simply being. And it's those places where we touch the very heart of God. The very heart of God. It's interesting, God's sense of humor. I, I've been planning this sermon for, what, a few days at least. Um, I started out with one and then God switched things. But then uh, just last night, I, I was kind of working on this, putting finishing touches on it. And then I go to, I'm just watching baseball highlights, you know, to see how... Uh, tiger, well, not Tigers so much, but uh, <laughs> looking to see how the Dodgers are doing and, and some of the other teams that I'm following. And then there are ads, right? Anybody who watches stuff now, any YouTubes, there are a lot of ads that are filling in there. And one ad had to do with a HelloFresh ad. Uh, HelloFresh is it's a delivery service, brings fresh ingredients to your doorstep. Because you've got a busy life. You know, you're a corporate executive and you've got 10 children and you've got a, a life that, you know, that is so busy and so, ch -ch -ch -ch, but your HelloFresh delivery comes in. And this one's for, I think it looks like shrimp linguine. But it's, it says, it begins to say, it says, oh, and you dig into those fresh ingredients and there's the lady chopping and oh, sense all the different textures and the colors and oh, can you smell the garlic coming up? Oh, it's so wonderful. And it's sizzling, the shrimp are sizzling in butter and, and you're just kind of watering in your mouth. And they say, yes, just live in the moment. <laughs> just live in the moment. And you can find that, that ad, I was gonna show it, but I figure that's too much video for one time, but you can find this ad, it's an amazing ad that markets toward our hunger inside, our hunger to touch what is real. It's it, it, hello fresh, mindful, mindful. Let's get into this state, oh, mindful. Our hunger to really exist in the moment and that moment is infinitesimally small. As soon as you kind of try to grab it, right, it's past. But it's precious. It's a diamond. It's gold. And that's where you find the heart of God. Well, why, why do this? You know, what's the biblical stuff behind this? What's the spiritual kind of context for living in the moment? Well, I'm going to say two, two major contexts for living in the moment, for living in the now. One is God, that's where God lives. And number two, that's what Jesus showed us to do. He's also God. Okay, that's where God lives. Remember the story about Moses and the burning bush? You know, people are enslaved in Egypt, the Israelites, and Moses is off, and God appears to Moses in the burning bush, speaks to him. And one of the things that he says is, well, Moses is all kind of shaken up and God says, set my people free. And Moses is going, what? Me? And God goes, yeah, you. And Moses is going on, well, I can't speak. I can't do any of these things. I'm not qualified. Wrong guy. Go over here. You know, all this stuff. Not good looking. You know, bad marketer, whatever. I'm... So God says, no. You're going to do it. And Moses says, well, and he's grasping for straws. And he says, well, at least tell me your name, right? What does God say? 
well, we have the word Yahweh, right, in Hebrew. But it means I am. What kind of name is that? <clears throat> I am. No, oh, what's your name, your real name? I am. <laughs> no, no, don't mess with me. This is life and death. They're going to kill me. I am. God is pure presence, okay? We're not going to get too philosophical about this because say, well, I am. God exists not only in the present, but God's present is like all eternity, okay? So it's like an eternal now, but we're not even going to get into that next week. No, just kidding. Uh, that's for your philosophy 101 or something, but, but God exists fully in the moment. God experiences both himself, the Trinity, all of creation fully in the present moment. I am. So that becomes the ground for our being, as Paul Tillich would say, great philosopher. Uh, that becomes the ground for who we are, where we find our happy place, where we find our fulfillment is in this whole understanding and allowing ourselves to be embraced by the great I am. So God exists fully in the present. He grasps, embraces creation fully. Reality itself is embraced by God fully. But there's an example there in Jesus. Because Jesus, of course, and especially in the Gospel of John, but other places, Jesus refers to himself as what? I am. And he almost gets stoned for doing that, right? But Because the Jews go and whoa, he's using the Yahweh term. No, you know, that's blasphemy. And so Jesus himself, too, is an extension of God's heart to us to help us to understand, to live in that moment, in the I am moment. That's where God dwells, right in the present moment. I am. But there's a problem. Well, it's us. I mean, it's not God. There's a problem. We tend to live where? We live either in the past or we live in the future. Now, it's not wrong. Now, get me straight on this. It's not wrong to live, to consider, to consider the future or the past. Okay? We make plans for the future. We try to wrap things up, maybe emotionally or other things in the past. We consider history. That's good. But I'm talking about your home base. Where do you live? Where do you live? This takes, this takes a little bit of reflecting, okay? Whether you live in the future, whether you live in the past, or whether your home base is living and experiencing and seeking and hungering after that present moment. And once you're grounded in the present moment, then you can consider the future or the past from a grounded place. The Bible calls it the rock, or God. That's your rock. That's Jesus. And so, living in that present moment, the future, the problem with the future is, it's the what if syndrome. If only syndrome. If only I was making more money, I could afford a bigger house or better car, and then I would be happy. That would be my happy place. If only um, I could find the perfect gal or the perfect guy, you know, who would make my life complete, you know, make me happy. That'd be my happy. If only, and everything is in the future. The problem is, is that the future is this big illusion. I mean, you could be a halfway decent predictor of the future, but it's still at the bottom line, it's an illusion. It hasn't happened yet. And oftentimes we, we let our worries carry us into the future. And we live in the midst of the worry pot that's bubbling away. And we're caught in the middle of it. And we don't know how to get out. The fear place. And that will project us into the future. Sometimes shame can throw us into the past. Shame or guilt. Places where we've messed up. Maybe messed up really badly. And hurt many other people. Hurt ourselves. And we're caught back in the past, 
trying to resolve it. How can I make amends? How can I make it better? How can I solve some of this brokenness that I've caused in other people's lives? And we're caught up and home base becomes the past. And that's where all your energy, or at least most of your energy goes. Trying to resolve stuff that is already water under the bridge. And that's, again, easy to say, but emotions don't follow that way. Duh. <laughs> they, they have their own kind of course. So how do we get out of the grip of living in the past, living in the future? How do we get into this place of living in the present moment fully? I'd like to turn to some of Jesus' words, because I think he's got some good stuff to say. It's in Matthew chapter 6. This is the Sermon on the Mount. This is his big sermon. This is where the cool stuff happens. I mean, cool stuff happens in other places too. But Sermon on the Mount has key stuff for our living. And in Matthew chapter 6, we're looking at, starting at verse 25, and you've heard these verses before, but they're worth repeating. And they're absolutely essential in terms of understanding what it means to live in the present moment. Listen to Jesus' words. Chapter 6, starting at verse 25. He says, For this reason, I say to you, do not be worried about your life. And you can almost hear people, their thoughts going, you know, that's easy for you to say, Jesus. You know, you're like cool dude and God and, and all this. Easy for you to pull off. I mean, his own disciples think of these things, right? As to what you will eat, what you will drink, nor for your body as to what you put on, isn't life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They don't sow or reap or gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you worth more than they are? And who of you being worried can add a single hour to his life? Why are you worried about clothing? Look at the lilies of the field. Look at how they grow. They don't toil or spin. And I say to you, not even Solomon, in all his glory, clothed himself like one of these. And if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So don't worry, saying, what will we eat or what will we drink? What will we wear for clothing? For the Gentiles eagerly seek all of these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will care for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. When he says that Father knows everything you need, it's that Greek word, Greeks are all into knowing, you know, everything was about knowledge, head stuff. They have like, I don't know, eight, nine, ten words for to know. This is the Greek word that means to know intimately. To know intimately. In fact, it also means it has nuances to know sacrificially, where that knowledge is aimed at benefiting others. Aimed at benefiting and understanding and connecting with the other. God knows everything that you need. You know, well, I don't feel taken care of all the time. <laughs> but God gives you the resources that you need, not what you want, not the outcomes or the expectations that you're shooting for, but God always gives you the resources, the tools that you need to take one step forward. Don't worry, Jesus says, about the things in life. And it doesn't mean that you don't plan. doesn't mean that you don't strategize. doesn't mean that you don't have some life goals and, and daily goals and career objectives and things like that. But again, it's where do you live? Where's your home base? Because Jesus says when your home base is in the Father and in his kingdom, which is AKA, it's a way of life. Jesus' kingdom of God is all about a new way of looking at life, a new, new way of living life. 
distinctive. Living out of the trust that a God will not forsake you or leave you, no matter what you're doing. Even when you're acting up in your worst way, God never leaves you or forsakes you. Jesus proved that, Mr. Friend of Sinners. So God is with you the whole step. We, we tend to depart. We tend to get distracted. We tend to fall off the boat and into the water rather than walk on the water. Oh, we're the ones who don't see straight. So living the present moment, it's just like the gal with the balancing stones. It's learning to focus, focus on the right things. Finding that little balancing point in your life. And you go, well, I don't know where my balancing point is. That's why God's there to help you. That's why the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you. You go, well, I don't go to church enough. I don't read the Bible very much. Um, that's okay. God will take you right where you are, right where you're standing, and will give you the next step. If you're willing to trust. If you're willing to say, okay, I need a partner. I need a, a companion here. I need a guide who will show me. And you go, well, God will mess with me. Yes, he will. He will mess with you. I mean, in some funny and good ways. But he'll mess with you for your own good. I guarantee it. 100% guarantee it. Jesus will be with you to teach you. Now, I mean, it may come in some surprising ways, a little warning. He may come in some surprise. You know, you expect, well, I want a vision of, you know, this Jesus with the long hair and the robe and all that. Well, he may come in blue jeans or he may come in a very different form than you expect, okay? <laughs> Just to keep you on your toes. But your heart will know. Your heart will know. And he will hit that balancing point exactly. Don't worry about the future, Jesus says. The prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 43, 19 talks about not worrying about the past. Actually, 43, 18 and 19. It says, don't, don't regard the things of the past. It says, behold, I'm doing a new thing. A new thing. Can't you see it? I'm going to make rivers in the desert for you. I'll make a way. I'll show you what to do. So, God will make a way. We've got three things, just three tips. I mean, you don't have to, if they work for you, fine. If they don't work for you, whatever. Um, dial up somebody else's blog. But uh, three things for you, three ways that might help you live in the pre present moment to touch that heart of God, to touch the heart of God's abundant living that Jesus said, that abundant living that he has for you. Three things. One is simply to find practices that help you live in the moment. Now, it may not be balancing stones. I mean, you could try it. it. may not be balancing stones. But that place where your conscious thoughts, your conscious striving, all of that stuff that you're used to kind of manufacturing falls away, just dissipates like a morning fog. Those practices, those experiences... I was guarding uh, yesterday, every morning, I, especially during our dry times, um, I water my plants in the garden. And there's just something simple and thoughtless and wonderful about just watering my plants, my peas and my peppers and, and my squash and all this, and just giving them a little drink every morning. And just connecting with nature. Sometimes I do it barefoot, you know, I mean, connecting and all this. I, I'm just a hippie from California. Sorry. <laughs> but, you know, Mr. Nature. But that's what gets me connected. That's what gets me going. Or uh, a good cup of coffee. A good cup of coffee. Mmm. Sumatra. Good cup of coffee. Um, what is it for you? Maybe a walk. You take a walk in the forest or... Or maybe you're not in a forest. Maybe you're in a city and, and you find that still place um, going to, into a park. Or, or maybe it's just a still, some place that you go. Or music, you know? Find that place where you're connecting to the present moment. And then let God be a part of that. Because he is anyway. 
but let him have an increasing influence in that. And you'll find that that's the very kernel of prayer. That you pray. So that's number one. Number two is, make sure I get these straight, learning to release the grip of the past or the future. Learning to release the grip of the past or the future. Paul has a, a great verse in Colossians chapter 3, verse 3. He says to the readers, he says, For you have died, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Let me say that again. It's kind of mystical. Uh, like rock balancing. For you have died, you, that striving ego, that trying to control your reality place, has died. And your life is hidden with Christ. It's almost like an embrace. And then God the Father in God. That you are held in an embrace that you can learn about every day, little by little, bit by bit. And you, you may get into bad moods and not realize it or whatever happens to you, the embrace is still there. It's still there. And God will wait for you to get into a better mood or, or become more cognizant of what's really going on and to find your balance in place and that embrace. And you have the, little by little, because your emotions don't change real fast, but little by little, bit by bit, when you concentrate, when you focus, and you say to your soul, say to God, I want to let go. Now, wherever you're living, I mean, that means being honest with yourself. If you're living in the past, and that's your home base, you're trying to resolve stuff, and you're really sweating it out, or you're living in the what-ifs of the future, be honest with God, because he knows you anyway. He knows your needs, right? Intimately, completely. Let God know that. Share that. I'm living too much in the future, in the past. Help me to live in the moment. And the more you practice that, the more it will become a reality for you. Practice makes perfect, right? So, learning to let go of that grip. Free me up. God's in the business of freedom, of freeing you up from past junk and future junk to live in the present, the abundance of the I am in the present. He will free you little by little. Or maybe sometimes we experience big shifts and we go, oh, wow, you know, conversion type stuff. And that's cool too. But however God does it, he will do it perfectly suited to who you are in the moment. Give him a chance. Finally, finally, this is a tough one. <laughs> Learning to be content. Why did I put it in quotes? We're learning to be content with who you are and what you have right now. Who you are and what you have right now. Another quote from Paul, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10. That's the chapter about the whole thorn in the flesh and something's going on with Paul that seriously is hampering, at least from his mind, hampering the good news, Jesus coming out of him. He goes, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. God says, you can. He says, God says to him, my strength is made perfect in weakness. My grace is sufficient for you. In this thorn or whatever it is. But he also says, he says, and that is why for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. What a weirdo, huh? <laughs> I delight in all this bad stuff happening. Paul's not a masochist, but he knows who his rock is. He knows his balancing point. He knows how to live in the present. And that present, he never, ever lives alone. In that present, he never lives alone. 
and neither do you. That's the whole point. Live in the present with the great I am. With the God who lives there for you, who loves you with an everlasting love, who has chosen you to do great things. That's right in the present. And whether the earth is going crazy, things are falling apart around you, you can stand on that rock in the present moment, you and Jesus, because he'll never leave you, because he loves you deeply, because he gave everything for you. That's not just Jesus, that's the Father, that's the whole Trinity, that's all, that's God giving himself to you, giving themselves to you, moment by moment in the present. Fully live there. Amen. Facebookers, we're going to go to prayer now and thank you for joining us. Thank you for your support, your financial and prayerful support. You can go to our website again, www.lighthousechurchdrummondisland.com. You can find a giving tab and all sorts of other good news. Uh, just join us each week, but uh, we will be, oh, I want a other announcement too for in our Zoom Bible study on Wednesday mornings, we're gonna be taking a break, by the way. Uh, we're finishing up the Gospel of Luke, which has been really amazing, but we're finishing it up on chapter 24, so we're gonna take a break this summer. If you'd like to join us in the fall, Email the church, and we'll be doing maybe a Bible study. We're not sure what we'll be doing, but uh, we'll Zoom together. And so that's cool. We can Zoom from any place on this planet, pretty much, and uh, we can catch each other depending on time zones. So uh, God bless you, and have a great week.